I have to say this is developing into a little bit of a habit. I've started to actually kind of read the notes to you that may sort of prompt me to where I am in a given discussion so that I can conti continue the, the discussion. And I'm going to do that again today uh, when I talk about Not Their Parent on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I am your host. I'm Kurt. And today is Saturday, the 24th of April of 2021. I welcome you here, whether you're coming on on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, or wherever it is that you happen to be coming from. And again, the subject of today's daily summation will be not their parent. I'm going to go ahead and read my notes, and this will sort of get you to the point where I think you see sort of where I'm coming from. When you work, particularly as a manager in a business somewhere, it's totally understandable that you attempt to ensure uh, nobody in that place is harmed. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Makes perfect sense. <clears throat> it's also reasonable for you to make certain nothing occurs uh, in which, or that which may, excuse me, uh, result in damage to the business or the products therein. Anything that happens to be in it, right? When the person you think might be acting in ways that could cause either to happen is a child, though, <clears throat> who should typically be with a parent, as a rule, right? It's not the child with whom you should be interacting. This is particularly true when the uh, parent or guardian, when a parent or guardian is present. It's often hard to deal with those watching after young ones. Difficult or not, it's what you must both prepare to do and actually do. <clears throat> the simple reason is that you're not that child's parent or guardian. It's a different thing if the parents or others are not present. And I have to acknowledge that. That's a very, you know, important thing to consider. Okay. So I'm in a retail store. And I'm looking after my son. We've just walked into the store and I'm looking after my son. <clears throat> this store carries a variety of different kinds of products. And one of the products that it has, it has an area <clears throat> that has cheapy products, one, two, three dollar products, almost like its own internal dollar store. My son sees in that little area a ball. Now some of the time he doesn't care. He'll leave him alone, he won't care about him, he'll do whatever, he'll move on. In fact, lots of the times, or the time, he will bypass that dollar store-ish area entirely because he wants to go to the toy, st toy area which is something that he cares about a great deal more than typically the little trinkety things in the dollar area. <clears throat> so, to this particular day, he sees a ball. Now, when I see him go into that little area where, they, where they're selling stuff cheap, I tend to stop and wait, even though we part ways and I normally go to get food or whatever I need to do when I'm in that particular store. And he goes to the toy area, typically. That's what normally happens, right? But on this particular day, he decided he wanted to go into that area. So I said, okay, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to wait. Now I'm with my son and I'm watching him play with this ball. And I'm being very careful to make sure that he does no damage to anything in that area. Because that's my job as a parent, in my opinion. <clears throat> a large part of my job is to make sure that my son does the things that he needs to do or doesn't do things that he shouldn't be doing. And you're saying you let him go to the toy area by himself. It's true. And the second that's a problem, that will stop happening. But it hasn't been. When I go to the toy area, he'll be there looking at the various things that are there, sometimes playing with various things, but not in any destructive or horrible way. Typically, that won't happen. Every once in a while, he'll see a ball in that area, for example, and he'll decide to play with it. And sometimes he'll get a little, little rougher than he should. But I've never once had him damage anything. And when he does, if he ever does damage anything, he, I'm going to end up paying for it in all likelihood. That's what's going to happen. So when a person in the store who I'm pretty sure was in a managerial position, low managerial, probably floor manager type, came out and started to mess with my son... My response may have surprised them a little. I'd gotten a cart so that I could go and shop in the food area. But what I did on that particular day was called my son to me. I left the cart where it stood and I walked out of the store. 
Now, I already don't care for this store very well, and if it wasn't for the fact that I am hard put to find a place that better suits my purposes and my needs, I wouldn't go there. There are other stores, in fact, that I used to go to, mostly dollar store type stores, that I just don't anymore. And I don't because I found that the people who work there are not good at what they do in terms of customer service. This is not surprising. They're probably not paid very well. You shouldn't be surprised by that. When you go into a place that's a dollar store, whatever you want to call it, you shouldn't be surprised that the people who work there are not very good at dealing with people. But the thing is this. I have a moderately autistic eight-year-old. And how any and everybody deals with him matters a lot. <clears throat> the result is, if you have a chance to deal with me instead of dealing with him, I'd kind of prefer you did so. Now, obviously, that's not the same for kids or if we go to the park or whatever. When I walk into a store, I don't really want you dealing with my son. And here's the thing. If that was an unreasonable expectation, it would be different. It's not unreasonable. If a, a quote, neurotypical child walks into a store and starts doing something wrong, their parents should be with them and you should be looking after uh, the parent dealing with the parent, not looking after, dealing with the parent rather than trying to deal with the child. That's what should be happening there. If you have a child in a store by themselves, that's a problem lots of times. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the age of the child to begin with. And on top of that, it also depends on whether or not the child is reasonably well behaved when they do what they do. A parent sending a child into a store or allowing a child to go into a store by themselves, if they trust that that child will behave well, is only a problem when the child doesn't. But at that time, it's not surprising for any worker in that facility, in that business, to act with the child, to deal with the child. But when the parent is near the child, that's generally not appropriate. I'm not saying there's nothing that you can do in terms of interaction with that child. I go into another one of that same chain of stores and there's a lady who's there who's older and she's probably got grandkids, right? And she knows very well how to deal with children. And when I have her deal with my child, she deals with them in very particular ways. And in the worst case, she generally agrees with me on what I say to him. That's appropriate. That's acceptable. When you walk up to a child and basically try and corral or start dealing with that child, when the parent is standing near the child and making sure that that child is behaving appropriately, you are wrong. You're mistaken. That's not something you should be doing. If you have a problem with the actions of the child, talk to the parent. Do not try and deal with the child directly, that's not your business, that's not something for you to do. If that's a problem for you, you probably don't belong working in your position. That is a part of the customer service paradigm, to use the fancy buzzword. When you deal with people who are under the age of 18 and their parents are present, your dealings with them should not be the same as they are for people the age, over the age of 18. And if their parents are present, if the child is doing something wrong, you ought to be talking with the parent, not trying to deal with the child. This is pretty much what I'm trying to get at today. When I say you're not their parent, this is what I mean. I'm not saying that, that you can't ever have any interactions or any dealings. And I'm not saying that if there's no parent or guardian present, you can't deal with people. I'm saying, in general, if you have a problem and there's a parent or guardian present, take it to the parent or guardian. Do not try to deal with the child because you never know who it is you're actually dealing with. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Again, this is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I am your host. I'm Kurt. Today is Saturday, the 24th of April of 2021. 2021, excuse me. Tomorrow will be Sunday, the 25th of April of 2021. 
thank you for everybody who's here on Rumble on the Pack podcast and on YouTube. Thank you for coming along and thank you for staying through my video. Remember, you can like the video on YouTube and give me a positive Rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Today's uh, subject has been not their parent. Tomorrow we're going to talk about bringing them back. And this is something that I really think we need to discuss in light of certain things that have happened, uh, particularly a particular incident that occurred in Washington, D.C. Um, okay, I uh, hope you're having a good day today. Today is Saturday. It is the Sabbath for those we are in the Sabbath for those who keep it, as far as I understand it, that's at this point in time. Hope your Sabbath is a good one. Uh, it is the weekend for pretty much everybody. Thank you again for all of those who are working on the weekend. I know that it can be quite a strain to do that, and I appreciate it, even though I don't necessarily go around saying it when I'm out on the weekend doing various things. I uh, hope you're having a good day today. I uh, hope that everything is going well for you in general in the course of your life as a whole. And hopefully we will see you again tomorrow on The Daily Summation. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Saturday, April the 24th of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional or maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurt's Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurt's Religion and Politics as well. I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with, a, with an S dot kpshubert.com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.